travel is like this luxury we get to have in modern life where we can just fly all over the globe. Just we can do, we can go, we can just drive across the country if we want to. So what's it like to actually travel with luxury luggage? I know you've seen luggage like this. It costs a lot of money. You're supposed to have like a turtleneck on, like Burberry overcoat and like some sort of like, you know, indifferent model sort of vibe on your face. But can you be a regular person? Can you be a regular guy or gal? Specifically guys, since I'm a guy and this is, you know, duffel and backpack, but for the ladies as well, what's it like to actually travel with luxury, like really beautifully conceived, like absolutely like craftsmanly concocted. I feel like a song is coming on. What's it really like to travel with this stuff? Is it like, is it all it's cracked up to be? I mean, is the money really worth it? Cause it obviously costs more to get into this stuff. Right? But once you have it, does it does it suck? Is it heavier? Is it, are you worried about it more? Clearly there is like that I iconic aesthetic with these just, I mean, just look at the look at the way this drapes down. I mean, this leather is unbelievable. So clearly there's like this iconic sort of aesthetic vibe to this thing. But what are the real benefits to it? That's what we're getting into in this video, okay? Not just luxury travel in general, but these bags in particular. And even if you're not interested in luxury travel, we're still gonna be talking about just travel in general. What's it like to travel? I have some very complicated feelings about this. Okay, so these bags are from uh, David, handmade up in Canada, up in uh, the, the French part of Canada, which I think in Canadian, when you do French, when you're French Canadian, it sounds like, la France France. <laughs> that's so rude, that's not true at all. My friend Justin Jackson does it, he's like, bang, <laughs> whenever he does a French accent from the Quebecois, he's like, bang, je me bats, bang. It's got a little hardiness to it. A little more hardy up there in Canada. But this company's very interesting, very thoughtful founder who's who's like is he's, he's like really, really, really like really into making the best luxury bags, right? There's a lot of luxury bags out there. There's like Prada and Louis Vuitton and like those brands, as well as a bunch of others you never heard of that are also luxury brands that are that are like known in luxury brand spaces. And he loves making a luxury good that's actually the best made thing. That's what he's trying to do, which I think is fascinating, especially since his family's been working in leather for forever. Okay, so they sent a duffel bag, which is, ugh, they sent this duffel bag, they sent this backpack. Here's, I just got back from traveling with them. Here's what I've learned. Sensational materials. The leather is just unfucking believable Pardon my French, but this, is like you, you know, my thing is, is I, I try not to learn anything about the brands. I try not to learn anything about the bags. I want to see what it's like to use, right? I just want to see what it feels. And, and my bit, one of my big tests is just like, don't look at it. Just close your eyes and touch and feel the fabric of our lives. You know, what's it like inside and outside? What it's like to use this thing and tactilely, the sensation of, of these things is just, <sighs> like, have you ever wanted bedding made out of leather? I've never wanted that. <laughs> I've never even for a second wanted that. Until now. I, I emailed the founder, Andrew, about like, okay, what's the deal with this leather? It's not like, wait a second. So check out this one. This is Chelon Shamon. Excellent, like, lovely, gorgeous leather bag. Mostly, like, that, that hard, that hard sort of shiny leather that you might be used to and like really like. This is what they call vegetable tanned. This is why it has that kind of like patina breaks in. You get like, if I just bent this right here, you just see this like this stretch right across it, which is part of what gives it all of its character down here after you use it and you break it in. Like it gets, it just, it gets really gorgeous looking. This is a very different kind of leather and it feels so, I mean, the moment I got it, I was like, I just want to, I like, what's this going to be like when it breaks in? It's so soft already. It's so movable. It's so, ah, oh, what is the deal? Our main leather is a proprietary full grain bull skin. Nixburg bull skin. We craft in northern Germany. 
German bowls are really strong. <laughs> That'd be awesome if that was the sentence right there. It keeps going, but German bowls are really strong. German bowls are really strong due to strong agriculture laws. And further, even within full grain leather, the Primo cut, we only use primary skins. Basically, our tannery is known for rugged footwear leather that's highly durable. And we use that base of experience to then develop a bag leather with high natural texture. That's what you can see on this. You see this natural texture, especially on this backpack. And he talks about how there's actually two different kinds of leather on these bags. And you can see it really clearly here. You can see the bottom, this flat, stiff, uh, stiffer, especially the, the strap or the handle on the top here. You can see different like there's two kinds of leather. This is a, a thicker, harder, more rigid leather. And then this is the textured, more supple leather. So here's what's so crazy about this. This is like almost like, it almost behaves like a, like a, like a fabric, right? Like a, like a, an organic cotton canvas or something like that because it's so soft, which immediately made me wonder like, what's that like when it breaks in? And he says, it just it just gets a little bit softer. It's just, it, it gets beautiful. He, he says, we don't use the word patina with these because it doesn't do the same kind of like, you know, stretchy kind of like, it almost like it's breaking the wax on those stiffer leathers. This is just gonna get more, ooey gooey over time, but it still has this incredibly strong uh, uh, tactile or like texture. What is it? This strong is strong. I mean, it's a, nat it's a it's natural fiber, baby. I mean, this is like, you can, like it's like your fashion network. Like this is like, this is like fascia, but it's skin. I will link to right now, if you're watching a leather bag, you might be interested in the organics of life. Some of the most important and, and, and some of the most incre incredible material, all of the most incredible material are like in our body. So our fascial network in our body, I'll show, I'll, I'll link to two of my favorite videos on fascia. One is on the fuzz, just watch that. And then the same doctor did another video where he shows this like tension testing of fascia. It's a little bit, it's a little bit gory when you're looking at it cause there's some cadaver stuff. But man, if you can get an understanding of how fascia works in your body, you can give yourself self massage, not just in your genitals, and other places as well. And it can really shift your posture over time. Though, let's be honest, self-massaging the genitals is really what's it. Never mind. No, I'm gonna move on now. So those two different kinds of leathers, you're really gonna notice. Just notice how I just keep doing this. It really feels sensational. This handle with that, uh, the straight sort of stiffer leather, it's still supple. It almost has, it almost feels like it has a stretchiness to it. This is all so conditioned and alive and gorgeous. It's ridiculous. These big panels on the duffel, like with just this leather, it's a really, really robust, structured, uh, protective material, but it drapes. Like I really want like a kimono made out of this. I just want to Alan Watts my way through life in a leather kimono made from these guys. Well, I guess that would be quite the point of clothing then, wouldn't it be? To, uh, to have it hang with dignity, to drape upon yourself as if, uh, as if draping consciousness on the very fabric of existence itself. <laughs> <laughs> and he has that laugh with like the cigarettes in his back of his throat. Let's talk about the liner material, okay? Look at this. This is actually, I thought it was gonna be a really shiny, sort of sheer, uh, uh, kind of delicate, fancy inside, right? That's what you would expect from something like this, and it's not. It feels elegant in the way that a 1960s Mercedes, like, uh, convertible silver with, like, wood panel and leather and, like, this twill, this tight twill, it feels elegant like that. Not like, not like grandma's like long cigarette holder. Okay, it's 65% recycled water bottles actually, and then 35% organic cotton. It's a seven something, seven gram, seven ounce twill. Okay, super durable, but it has a nice and it has like a softish hand feel. I really like this material a lot. You know, you see a leather bag like this, and you're like, oh, I got it, leather bag. Like you're a fancy person. Like you're you're just like you your your parents have money or something. It was when I opened the bag and was working on the inside that I was like, oh my god, these materials are actually uh, real. They're real. That's like that. That feels aesthetically and, and and tactilely everything. I'm like, oh, I just I just got more interested. Now these zippers are Riri. Again, we're talking about just the sensational materials that they use. Riri are some of the most expensive zippers. It's like a 
Swedish made. It's the, it's the kind of zipper that I think is gonna break in even sweeter and better over time because it's just made with like the the highest quality. It's like more high quality than typical luxury bags have YKK Elance or something like that on them. All, like luxury bags across the board typically do that. And it's actually, YKK is a more affordable zipper and it works great most of the time. These Riri are like the best of the best. And I've only I've only been using these for like a week now, but I can I can see just a little bit of improvement over time, right? In the same way that leather like will break in over time, these zippers are going to break in a little bit over time. That's when we're talking about an artifact, you guys. It's like an artifact. It's not even <laughs> It's not even a bag. It's like it's like something that your great grandchildren are going to be fighting over. This backpack has a nice circular, like you can just easily get it up and over. I love that. I mean, obviously, if it's if it's packed, like I've got, I'll show you what I'm what I packed in this thing. If it's packed out, it can be a little bit like you know, because I don't love these zipper pulls. These zipper pulls are just these little eyelet guys. They're they're good. You can get your finger and your and your thumb right on them, but they're a little like you they do require a little bit of focus. There's certain handholds on them that are just grip and rip it and great. But there's sometimes where you're like you're reaching around, you're like, "Oh yeah, hey, <laughs> okay, let's just uh, and then you're like trying to find it or whatever. I don't know. I think we could do a different zipper pull. But they are very elegant with the with the silver. I'm sure they have some bags with brass or or like a bronze look. I'll mention in the description below at like, you know, at the very top like what color these are. He was saying that this is like a color that like I have one of the first version in this new color that they have. Now, big question for me is how do these things break in over time? Like what's it look like? And he was telling me some stories about like this guy who's been using it for a year nonstop, like 12 months of travel basically. He's a a, a a uh, some sort of performer and just hucking and jiving and throwing this thing in. And he wrote a year later, he's like, I can finally honestly review this bag and here's the deal. Like it's better than it was before. It's like, it just keeps getting better. That's one of the good things about a material like this. Like this leather is just, obviously it's sensational just from the start, but over time, how it breaks in more, how it's really robust, how it lasts for a long time. Ugh. This is one of the big things that we're gonna find about these luxury bag things. Like, like at least the duffel. Like any car camping, any anything like that. This is like an old world, I'll show you a new world duffel in a little bit. It's like a old world duffel. It's kind of sick to have one of those, yikes. Leather Care, let's talk about it for a second. They make their own wax that they recommend you use for this thing, of course, like, like, like any smart brand would when you're selling something like this. So that's what I would use. There's a difference between waxes and conditioners for leather and they're like, they make their own wax and so I'd be like, just going with that. And I, would, I, I don't know how often you'd put that on. You'd just kind of, if it ever got kind of dry and crinkly, but dude, I cannot picture that happening right now. You know, it just, I'm still on sensational materials. The first part is like, it is just so fearfully and wonderfully made. Here's what they do. They do this edge seal on these things and it's actually called edge painting or something. It's like this, like this, this ancient art of leather working. And it's a lot of luxury brands will have an edge seal uh, or an edge painting that, uh, that looks great at first. And then it kind of chips away and, and chunks off over time. And theirs is designed like, you know, they do it in like the French way cause they're in Montreal. And it's like this, it's ancient fucking dru druidic practices, but it feels really good in the hand. None of that weird like graininess on the edge of the leather. The thread on the bag that they, that they, that they sew this whole thing together is like a number 69 imported from Germany. And, he, <laughs> and this guy, Andrew was like, uh, here's the deal. A lot of these luxury companies aren't importing European thread because it costs more, but the European thread is woven in a way that gives us more durability, which is essential when you're working with leather because leather itself has such high durability. I mean, it, no stone unturned. So that's the kind of luxury thing where when we're looking at the prices of the bags, like we're talking about for these, where I'm like, okay, hold on. That's kind of sick. Like I'm listening. It's very simple. We've got zipper, thread, leather, liner. Okay. That's, that's basically all the stuff that's going on. Zipper, thread, leather, liner. Where do these come from? all the best of the best. How are they put together? All the best of the best, right? So that's what you're buying when you're buying good luxury stuff. And like, I don't know, I, I, haven't, I haven't messed with many like other luxury brands yet, 
I, I think there's a lot of interest in, in this kind of stuff because you buy this once and I'm talking about like it's a 20, 30 year bag. That's the dream, right? You buy that, you know how much money you save over the course of your life when you buy good shit, even if it costs so much more up front? Have you thought about that? Have you, like the, the amortization of your savings? And they have like a three-year warranty or something. Check out the warranty information on their website. I, I, I have been thoroughly impressed with, with their materials and, and the sensationalness of it. So thanks, David. Let's talk about the backpack. It's got an almost cute aesthetic, right? It's almost like a little boy design. It's so simple because we're working with the integrity of the material, right? We don't want to see a bunch of bells and whistles on this thing. It actually, it actually is, is nice, simple, but there's enough organization. There's little secret pockets like, like this one. There's a nice little thing right here. There's no water bottle compartment, but this is perfect size for like a card, like a, like a Metro card or something. And it just goes right in there, real discreet. It's got a little bit of that liner in there. It's just like better than it needs to be. I noticed that cause my, my, I was staying at a hotel and my hotel card just like went right in there. It was epic. I love the almost playful simplicity of this back panel, right? First of all, big old leather reinforcements sewing in our straps, which I'll talk about in a second. You've got a luggage pass-through, very simple, just a, just a strip of that gorgeous leather. But it's just got a, like, you know, with our, our nice little secret pocket here, it's just such a playful, simple aesthetic, right? The straps are actually ridiculously tactile, like, like, like they're delicious from a tactile sense. They have the same leather and, and it's almost like a thinner more uh more like sort of sup supple piece this is it feels like a different kind of leather than this but maybe it isn't just because it's sewn across this it's sort of held flat more it feels like like the kind of webbing that's in like a a fighter plane you know and in, in some some air force type stuff uh, very i actually it's great because it's obviously it's elegant and but there's something organic about it. The webbing is uh, self-healing down here, so when you when you make it short, it just, it automatically sucks itself up. When you make it long, there's no dangle going on. A little bit awkward for me that we sew this into the bottom here, and I'll tell you why. Because it actually pinches my doughy little love handles, right? It comes down, and I feel that pinch right there, because this, this strap does a little, does a turn. I wish this went right here, right on the side panel. That way I wouldn't feel that. I don't know if they'll end up changing that. Everything on these bags are so considered that, that it would be surprising if that's not like that for a reason. But for myself personally, I noticed that and it was kind of, it kind of bugged me. But to be frank, since it's such like a fancy bag and I'm like, you know, I'm wearing like, I don't know, like you have to wear specific kinds of clothes with these bags. More on that in just a minute. But like I did a lot of one strapping with this to hold a really elegant bag casually. Watch this. Hey, what's going on? Did, did it look kind of cool? <laughs> did you see what it's like when you carry like a gorgeous, really good thing? Like casually, I love the, I love how casual the duffel looks. This too, I, I did a lot of walking around. My wife and I were at a conference. We were at a John Wineland event. I've done two things in my life that have been like, uh, like pay a little money, go to an event, like let's do some personal development stuff. And both of them have been epic. I'll link to both of them below in the description at this time code. But a lot of one strapping it, okay? A lot of holding casually, just like casual. I mean, then it felt like it makes you feel a little, a little big boy, that's for sure. Feel a little bit bigger, a little more grown up. Definitely you're gonna notice this handle a lot. I found myself carrying it, like I liked carrying it. I liked the feel of the hand so much that sometimes I would just carry it. What's great about that is I don't have a bunch of strap dangle. So when, my, when I'm carrying it, it's not dangling on the ground, right? I'm like, I'm up off the ground, carrying it like this felt epic. I mean, just because you can shift it up a little bit and it's, it's nice feels a little more grown up than than putting it on even. Two smallish external access pockets on this guy. Okay, we got a front guy, which actually has a nice little, little visual treatment here where your zipper's sort of receded inside here, elegant. Then you've got your zippered guy in the back, which is, uh, which is about hand size. Both pockets, you have low visibility. We've got no dimension here, right? It's just flat. And the way that the zippers come in, you can't really see. So you wanna go for not much 
stuff in here, your fingers are gonna do the finding. Boom, got my new Sony earbuds because my my earbud thing, my Wi-Fi wireless earbud test is coming soon, y'all. It's gonna be a big one. Okay, so I don't have very much stuff in here. I know I can reach in, I can feel around, and I can get my little uh, my little smell good stuff that I that's just like a little trick for when you smell like a hobo and you want to smell like a hobo with cologne on. Same thing with here. I just use this one back here for uh, my external hard drive for editing actually. Just picking one thing that you use that for and then I would throw my phone in here as well. It fits, it fits well. My iPhone X just fits perfectly in there. So that'd be a perfect place if you want to have everything out of your pockets. Great place to put that. That liner again is on the inside of everything. Just three, like like the, those four simple materials. The leather, there's two different kinds of it. The zippers, okay, which are the same all over the place. The Riri number eight, I think, or number six. Riri metal number six. That's what these zippers are, okay? You do have some webbing here on the, on the straps, okay? That's another material, the liner on the inside. Just a, 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 you know, a material handbook and then they're putting that together in simple products, yikes. It's like a lovely design sort of uh, uh, ethos. What is not a lovely design ethos for me is the fact that you're gonna get some zipper scrapage, okay? Especially the more packed out your backpack is, the more those zipper teeth are gonna get you a little scrapage. You're gonna feel that on, on your hands. You're gonna feel that right there. The same thing with there's this little zip up here I'll show you, um, okay? You're gonna notice that. Back here on the back, it's actually not as bad because the zippers are just in line with that material. Somehow it doesn't scratch as much. So like there was a couple times where I was going in and out like a few times and I had to switch up hands because it was like getting annoying actually. It would like get annoying because I was, I was packed out. I had a bunch of stuff in here. And these are your only external access here, right? Everything else is inside the bag. So when you're going in and out for your keys or for your this, that, and the other, you're just gonna notice that, okay? Mind that. Now inside the bag on the front of it, we have a great zipper pocket. Why do I like this so much? Because it's got that beautiful liner. Look at this gorgeous like little piece of leather outlining it as well. Um, but it's just a great size. So I removed one of my pouches and I just had a bunch of, I put that stuff right here. This is all my tech stuff, my, uh, my adapter for my MacBook Pro, a bunch of cables, my little, you know, my little headphone adapter for the iPhone, all sorts of little crap. It all went in there, all the cables, which is awesome because one less pouch in the bag or less stuff in one of my pouches. And I can use the bag because I do have one, two, and then three on the inside for organizing my stuff with the built-in pockets here. Okay, here's how I have this thing set up. I'm gonna start pulling stuff out and then we're gonna talk about the back organization panel. This is uh, this is just a long sleeve merino wool shirt from Wool and Prince. I'll put a link to this in the description below. I love this. They're, they're, uh, anyways, I'll talk about some shirt stuff that's important from them and with these bags in particular in a second. I have my little ceremonial sack with my with a little bit of cannabis, a little bit of tobacco. And if you're interested in conscious cannabis use as it's becoming legalized, we can totally think about cannabis in a different way. It doesn't have to have this like seedy underbelly vibe that it has had to have because in order to get it before, you had to know like a fucking Terry who has really short shorts and like those, those like Nike or or like New Balance shoes that are like, where do they even sell those? Are those just like at the generic man store? You know, the ones that are like, they're like, just, they're just like, hey, I need shoe. Oh, shoe, shoe's over there, that's shoe. Anyways, you used to have to know some weird Terry's to get, you know, drugs, but now it's cannabis and it's legal in so many states and it's getting more and more legal because the stigma is just like, Guess what? It's not reefer madness anymore. Anyways, if you're interested in conscious cannabis, it's something I'm passionate about, check the link in the description below. I've got a resource for you because it's a valuable resource, like the 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 plants, you know, the cannabis particularly, especially if you type A fuckers who are, who are like getting into your goddamn BMW with this shit and like you don't know how to turn off your your head when you get home from work. You don't know how to, how to engage with your wife or your kid and actually have depth connection and relationship there. Cannabis has helped me a ton there. Not like I get stoned before I come home, but I do a little bit of working with cannabis and it helps me get a little more grounded in life. Guess what? I get more successful too. Works both ways. Waterfield Tech Pouch, which I'll open up for you in a second, and I'll talk about some pouches for this bag in a second. I had a, a hat thrown in there, water bottle. This one's great from Zulu. Right now I'm testing this one a lot, even though it's pink, it's what they had at Target. They, I'll link to it on Amazon below. It's got a lock, 
okay, which is killer, it's insulated. And then this bottom part can come off for cleaning or putting ice cubes in there as well. It's kind of sick. No water bottle pocket on the outside, right? So you're gonna have to do that and having enough water for me is just like one of those things. I, I don't wanna have to need water. But the truth is there's a lot of water a lot of places. So if I had a little, a smaller bottle, I could get that filled up more often, but I like to not have to be a burden. Okay, laptop compartment on the back with a nice little clip on the top, which I will never use because I just never use these. And your laptop's not gonna fall out of this thing because of how this piece right here sticks out over where the laptop is. The laptop is not suspended, but you do have, you know, leather in the corners here, but it isn't suspended up off the back of the bag. And they, they couldn't really do that because I can fit my 15 inch laptop in here, but I do get some teeth scrapage against this, right? So you're gonna wanna mitigate that potentially. Um, this might be best used as a tablet put your tablet back here because there's not a tablet thing. And then you have a cache, a laptop cache or sleeve for your laptop and just throw it in there. Your mileage may vary on that. I personally just put my MacBook in here. I like the simplicity of that. Even though there's no uh, iPad sleeve, I put my iPad and my laptop right back there. They were a little tight to get in and out, but I got it out fine. And it's like the kind of material that, that if you use it that way, it'll start to just like, bend and open a little bit with how you're using it over time and it'll start to get, oof. It's the thing about bags like this, this is just like, these are artifacts. They'll find it when you're dead. <laughs> when our species is dead, they'll find this. Then two simple pouches here, Ni neither big enough for a, uh, like, like a computer charger or something like that. And then a pencil in between. I just put my little nimble battery in here because when I'm staying at hotels, when I'm doing lots of stuff, it's nice to have, I don't know if I remember to plug in my phone. I don't know if I'm, I've got a different evening routine, right? So, uh, especially when my wife and I were at sex camp, <laughs> I didn't know if I was gonna be thinking about, <laughs> about my phone when I got home. Anyways, I, I linked to those events that I've done. Bef I'll, I'll write a little bit in the description below about them. It was, it was really killer. And it wasn't sex camp. <laughs> it was the art of fearless intimacy. Then a simple pencil pen holder, which I put my Apple pencil in right there. Okay, let's talk about this main, let's talk about our size here, okay? Solid daily carry size. All right, I like this visibility. I like that I can zip that panel open and even with nothing in it, the bag's like standing up by itself. Depending on how you have it packed out, it may keep standing, but it may not. Like your laptop in the back might pull it over. You know, your mileage may vary. But as you can see here, what's great about this is going for some taller, Pouches, some, you need pouches in this thing. You need pouches. I was kind of skitterbrained with a hat and, and shirt. I don't normally have that, but when I go to a conference or something, I'm out all day and I need, I just want to have like a little warm thing in case I need it. And I did need it, so I'm glad that I had it. But one of the things that's going to be necessary on this bag is some pouches, okay? You're going to want some pouches. In fact, I want David should work with me to make a pouch for this bag. I've got some ideas, but anyways, you could probably figure it out for yourself. David needs to make some, some pouches. I don't know if it's the leather or the lining or some combination of both, but this thing wants a pouch. It wants a pouch for your, your technical gear. Here's what I've been using was this uh, Waterfield Tech pouch. It's got a, pa it's got a pocket on the front. Um, it's made out of gorgeous leather. I wanted to find something that fit like the aesthetic here, obviously. Like if I'm using a <laughs> like a pouch like this inside of here, it's like, actually it's kind of, actually that's kind of good. <laughs> Part of me looking at that, I'm like, oh yeah, it's like hunting. This is like, <laughs> this is like the Republican party right here. This is like when Dick Cheney shot that guy in the face with a fucking, <laughs> with a, with buckshot. It's a little bit of hunter security orange, but you know, it. I wanted something more elegant. The truth is though, I didn't like using this. It's too bulky for this. It's too bulky, it's too perfectly sized. I want something a little bit, like, I want this bag really feels great when it's not that packed out. So I grabbed th everything from my previous pouch, which basically everything that was in here was just in here. This, I wish I would have stuck with when I was up there. I ended up taking this out of the bag and leaving it in the car um, and just put a bunch of the snacks and shit that I had in there just at the bottom of the bag. But this would have been great. This with a water bottle and then uh, and and then like another little pouch for my headphones. Like this Bellroy pouch, for example. Like, like those there, bam. Bam, bam, then I got my computer in the back, my, my little battery up in one of these things, my tech cables up here, my spare hard drive, my all my on the go items, right? Like, I, like I'm well organized, I know where everything is, it's, a, it's simplicity, it's modular, 
but uh, there's not a bunch of shit in here. And just to open this up really quickly, I've got a bunch of stuff in here. It's got like a book sort of thing. I had a bunch more snacks, but I ended up throwing them in the bag and ate them when I was at the event. My Bluetooth headphones, some cables I need for that, some CBD oil, some uh, breath mints, earplug, like just the ra all the random stuff that you need. But again, my complaint here is that this is just a really big, it's just a really big way of carrying that. All of that stuff felt it fit in here, except for the Bluetooth headphones. And so these two, I find having two modular thin just take up much less space than this. I'll link below in the description uh, to my latest pouches video, which I think is going out before this video. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of pouches. There's a lot of pouches. And I'll link to my page that is all my favorite pouches. You don't have to watch the video. You can just look at them on the page. My, I highly recommend getting some good pouches for this and La David or David. I highly recommend you guys have some pouches for this thing. Like designing some pou some pouches for this would be sick. By the way, just to show you this, because I haven't yet, it's like batch nine, backpack 22 of 30. So we're talking like, you're getting, what, you're getting something that's, that they only make a certain number of these every year. You know, that's, that's this shit's kind of cool. Especially when it's so, uh, when they've been so fussy about the details. I just like the details, right? And I like that they like the details. Also, are you still there? Are you still watching? How long is this video right now? <laughs> I haven't even started with the duffel. But these are all my thoughts and what I found about this bag. Thank you for listening and paying attention. You must be a bag geek like me. And I, <laughs> welcome. Let's keep going. I said it before and I'll say it one more time. I just like this, this big, beautiful, round zipper thing. It moves really smooth and free and you want that. That's why you don't want to have like, like wayward fabric just sitting in there. Most of the time when I'm cruising around in my regular life, I was using this as my regular life bag. This is how it would be set up just like this. And I, I might even find my way uh, out of having my water bottle just because it would be so much nicer in this thing to not have that. It really would be nicer. The one thing I might change on the inside of this bag is building in a, some sort of an internal water bottle pocket. Okay, so that I can so that I can keep this against that so it doesn't fall over like this. As it is, I think I'd be s like annoyed enough to just not bring a water bottle or bring a smaller one, right? Obviously this thing's <laughs> fucking tank, it's burly. But I like having a bunch of water because then I'm not co constantly going up and filling up, that's time. That's time, like I just got my sip, it goes back in the bag, I've got all day long in this, I don't have to, like I'm good. So it'd be kind of nice to have something that is collapsible, I could use it to store my MacBook charger if I didn't want to bring a water bottle, um, but that held that so it didn't fall over like this. So ultimately I feel like it's a delightfully rich and elegant experience carrying this thing around. I'm a no bullshit kind of guy. Like I'm, I throw my laptop on the table. I'm making money. I'm sending fucking emails out. I'm editing scripts. I'm editing video. I got work to do. I got to get back home because I got kids to feed. I got a 10 year old to wrestle. I got a two year old to like survive. My two year old girl's just like, <laughs> hey dudes out there, pray you get a daughter. Just pray, because it'll change. My dad never got a daughter, and it would have changed so much about the guy, you know? We're working on it still, but now he's got a granddaughter, and, and that's, like, the work's getting done. But man, having a daughter, whoo! She's a good one, too. Yeah. It's kids, man. Kids. So ultimately, delightful, rich, elegant, and, like, solidly organized, actually. Having the front and the, the back sort of external access, I got my one issue about the uh, the teeth scrapage here and, and wishing that this somehow had a little bit of dimension. Two things, a little bit more dimension possibly, maybe we don't even need that much. I just want like a wider, I wanna see, I wanna get into, I wanna be able to see it more. I wanna be able to get in without my hand, like because of the way that it's sewn in here, there's just not as big of a mouth as I think there, there should be for my size of hand. Let's talk about the duffel bag. First of all, you've got this big old lovely like travel by boat, travel by rail like aesthetic. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's just like, come see the wonders of the Indies. It's just some classic like Hemingway type shit, man. Like pre-Hemingway, like <laughs> Jonathan Livingston missionaries in Africa's type of vibe. Heavy leather enforcements on the bottom and the corners, okay? So all sorts of reinforcement down here with this really 
thick, hard uh, leather, uh, even though even, <laughs> like even their thick as hardest leather is, is still like, no, I'd, yeah, I'd sleep in that. You've also got these two little feet here, which I'm interested, I, I don't know exactly what they're, what they're there for, right? I don't know, but you can, but I, I can picture they, they absorb some of the wear and tear from this one big panel or something like that. So just like no stone unturned, these corner bits, you see this nice corner bits here. By the way, there's a laptop compartment inside this duffel bag um, and it's suspended off the side actually a little bit. And then there's this big thick piece of leather padding down here or, or you know protection down here. So you've got some good protection for the laptop. We've got the tiniest little front pocket with our, again, number six, Riri metal zippers all over the place. It's just, it's just a little guy. So like what goes in there? Like your keys? Actually what you want to put in here is just like a key fob, like one, so you could reach in and grab it really easily. Um, probably designed for your phone. My iPhone X fits in there really perfectly. But to me, ultimately, the only thing I can think about using this for is, you know, when you leave for your trip and you need a place to put your car key if you drove to the airport or your house key or something that I just, I'm not gonna look into, I'm not gonna use at all. Like, that's, that's what goes in there. That, and then I don't have to think about it because all my daily carry needs, all my external access, all my shit's actually right here. I, I don't need that for much. And even if I'm not using that backpack, I'm, if I'm traveling with a duffel, I've, I've got like at least a sling or a backpack on likely. On the back side here, there is a luggage pass-through. Uh, and I find myself wishing one of my favorite things on any bag, a link at this time code to the Filson 24 hour 10, K, 10 cloth briefcase, which is one of my favorite briefcases. Like anybody, anytime someone is a big boy or girl is asking for like a grown up sort of briefcasey shoulder bag kind of thing, it's my favorite. It's so Hemingway, I love it. But one of the things it has is several uh, open, like there's no, no clasp, no zipper, no clasp or anything, open places to just throw throw a rolled up magazine or or something like that. I love those kinds of pockets. I wish there was something on here like that. Like when I saw this piece of panel right here, I was hoping that that would have like an open, I can just shove, I can just quickly like let some, let a snack or my phone go right into there. But no other pockets over here just the luggage pass through. Now there are these side flaps, these 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 flaps with the, with these buttons for some like some cleanliness, some some like a little bit of compression, mostly just like cleaning up those big, uh, those big like ear, like pig ears, right? Now I pulled out my jacket and stuff last night when I got home, cause I needed that. So this doesn't actually have, it wasn't, it's not as full as it was. I also had my travel foam roller in here, <laughs> which I pulled out and, and used last night. I'll link to my video on that right now. But you can still see how those, those corners actually give us a little more of that, you know, Louis Vuitton trunk, like classic sort of thing. When this thing's filled up, it just has a burly masculine, like, like considered, thoughtful, like a clean aesthetic. It's really nice. And when it's open, you get great visibility on the main compartment, which is which is killer. You can like for car travel, which is what we did on this one, I would I just left it unzipped the whole time. I just left it unzipped cuz I could reach in there, I could pull out an item when it, just from the back of the trunk, I could just I could just throw stuff on top. It's so nice, these handles, oh God, I'll tell you about the handles. So honestly, for me, I did not clip these much. One thing that's great about this is that the, the clip down here is on this little finger loop. So you get your finger behind there, it's really easy to clip it in. The question I have is, is it gonna stay clipped when it's packed out? I suspect that if, like the more you have in there, the more it will stay uh, clipped if it's pulling down, if like, if we're pulling up like that. Like if we're pulling up from the inside, if we've got a lot of, a lot of like, you know, if you're pulling out like this or something, I, I don't know, but I think there's some magic place where it's overpacked maybe, it, it unduck, unbuckles pretty easily. Underpacked might even unbuckle a little easier than if it's just like, you know, Goldilocks just right. But that little finger loop is really just another perfect moment of, wow, thanks for the consideration. Because have you ever had something where you had to like go inside the bag to clip it on? It's like, fuck you. This is so elegant. Simple, but not too simple, right? Not too simple. It's simple enough. It's like, there's a, there's a thing where, it's like it would be simpler to not have that loop there, to just have the, the button there, but it wouldn't be simpler to use, 
right? So optimizing our shit for what it's actually like for us to use because we're in this body, okay? We have this will and this desire and this way of seeing things, but we're in this body, right? So when I'm wanting to clip this down, there's a thing that my hand is capable of doing. This is designed for our appendages. Thanks, David. Strap is very simple. It has an elegance to it. I like this, this material a lot. It feels like, you know, masculine fighter pilot, but it's still clean. Um, you've got a big buckle in here. Here's the deal. You're not going to be able to get this, this nice, supple, like really, really classy, simple, um, soft. I, you know, I like bigger ones where, the way that they feel. I like smaller ones the way that they look, right? But you're not going to get this up and over that metal buckle. So we're not going to make this very tight. Like this is, this is about as tight as it can go and still have this on our shoulder. Right? So it's a longer, more grown up, you know, you're just like kind of, you're like, hey, I'm a big boy. Like even when I put this on with this shirt, which by the way, Western Rise just sent me this shirt. I'll link to it in the description below. I don't know what it is, but I fucking love it. It's so, I haven't even talked to them. I'm like, what did you send me? <laughs> it's so soft and good. And knowing them, it's some, um, some crazy like natural synthetic hybrid. That, and I just look, it's like my hair pulled back like Steven Seagal. I feel like I should be, <laughs> I feel like I should be as an actual successful person right now. More on being an actual successful person in a little bit, because that's some of the things about these bags is the look. Like you're gonna look like go ruck. You wear this tactical go ruck thing. Like you're gonna look like you know how to do an emergency medical tracheotomy, right? Like in the field. Like oh, there's someone with a with a military bag. He knows what to do. It's like oh no, I I I, I do email marketing for a tech firm. This is definitely gonna have that vibe. Like the women you're going to be attracting with this men is like. <laughs> You might be paying. You might be paying for more expensive meals than you wish you were. But the casual, like the casualness of, of this carry. Again, I, I should have more stuff in there because it looks better when it's packed out full. But you're also not always going to have it full, so I guess that's what you're seeing. And uh, the casualness of this, but the the kind of the, the big boyness, the grown upness of it, the elegance of it. Woo wee handles. Handles! If you know me, you know handles are some of my favorite things. I was talking about it on the bag. I'm talking about it in all my bags. Handles is a place where, where a brand can really, this is where so much of the conversation between my nervous system and the bag happens. Not all of it, but a, but a lot of it. These handles are awesome. They're, they're that stiffer leather, but it's rolled over and then the edges are painted after it's been like sewn together with that <laughs> number 63, imported from Germany thread. Uh, and there's some sort of, there's, it feels like there's some sort of, of something in like rolled inside of there, probably like, probably like bone marrow or something, but it's great. It's mostly, it's just the slightest bit of, slightest bit of, of soft, like suppleness on the outside. And it's the kind of thing that's just like how that's gonna break in over time, how that's gonna get used to your hands. It's like, oh, yeah. another thing on the Filson bag, that's what taught me, that, that Filson 24 hour briefcase, that handle on that bag, that taught me what it's like when leather breaks in and is used like with your oils, your hands, this sort of thing. It's like the dream of selvage denim where it's like it breaks in on like just the way that you move. That really happens with leather on a handle. Oh my God, it's so lovely. I mean, four years from now, if I'm using this bag, do you know what this is gonna be like? It's gonna feel like a literal, like I'm gonna, this bag will have a name, right? It will be a person. To me. Okay, even if those things are clipped, it's really easy to unclip them, get the zipper open, excellent visibility. You can see all inside the bag. And I wanna show you two things. On the inside, on one side, first of all, we've got our laptop compartment, which is pulled off the bottom of the bag a little bit, depending on how you have it packed out. Okay, if it's not very packed out like this, like it's just up against the bottom. Like I said, you've got that ri that nice leather padding on the bottom. Um, this is great to have. It has another one of those perfect little leather straps with a button. This is like, which I would, which again, I, I would never use. I, I don't tend to use those things. So it just falls down below and there's nothing scratchy on the outside. The actual button, but like base, the back of the button actually has like a little tiny, like thin piece of leather on it to keep it from scratching anything. Thanks, David. This is actually quite nice to have a subtle little like, like organizer in there, right? It's like, I have all my clothes and stuff back here, which I'll show you in a second, but it's nice to be able to have a place for like books or your iPad or something. So even if my iPad is in 
is in that thing, I found myself, I wanted to bring one of these just in case I got time. Latham's Quarterly, which I absolutely love. It's the best, like, it's all sorts of thinking and writing throughout the, the centuries on a given topic. This one's intoxication, because I'm making a course right now on cannabis, creativity, productivity, flow, that kind of stuff. And uh, there's some great old shit about coffee in there, man. Holy crap. Honoré de Balzac. Whoo! I'll link to my tweet about that. I <laughs> tweeted about that, and I, and I have the whole story in there, and you can read it. It's so good, any of you coffee lovers. But great to have a little laptop compartment there. Then on the other side, we've got a zipper, just like in the bag. Again, simple, consistent, aesthetic, like, design choices that they've got here, right? Same liner, same leather on the outside of the zipper here that they had on the internal pocket on the backpack. This is actually epic. This is big. This is the kind of pocket you're like, oh man, you love this on a daily basis. Big enough for probably your underwear or socks if you want to do something like that. Um, or if you've got your laptop and your, your charger and some cables and some tech, depending on how you carry. And then of course you just got this great big visibility, this huge compartment. It's just an epic sack. Okay, I didn't use packing cubes in this thing. It just felt like, again, like I need like a better packing cube for this. Actually, the track packing cubes are pretty dope. Here's one of those. I don't know if they make a bigger one, but it's that like hunting orange, dry finish wax canvas from Scotland, right? I'll link to these in the description below right now. But it's like, you got that, that again, that Dick Cheney vibe, baby. I am not a Dick Cheney fan. Holy shit, did you see that movie? That was good. So I've just like Marie Kondoed my way here, all right? I've got my I've got my shirts folded in such a way so that they stand up when I get to the place I can I can pull them all out. I just lived out of this thing. Okay? I just I didn't pull any of my clothes out. I would maybe the night before I pulled something out because we were getting up early to go to this conference or whatever. But uh, for the most part I just lived out of this. I'm doing a video right now on my favorite pants. I've worked with some really interesting companies like Doer to get some good pants. This is one of my favorites. I'll tell you what it is in the video, so look for that. All right, so what's this thing like to use? What is this luggage like to use, all right? What is it really, what's it, what have I learned? I actually have learned some shit. I actually have, because this is so different for me to carry this kind of stuff. I'm normally carrying like old school, like uh, outdoorsy vibe stuff that my, like my friend Tom Bin sent me that one. It's this old vintage North Face, gorgeous. I've normally got stuff that's a little bit, a little bit like technical, a little bit outdoorsy, kind of just cool bro-y dad stuff, right? So this is a total departure for me. Going through public places with these bags, you are going to notice a level of like Magnum PI-ness in yourself. <laughs> That was that was new for me. By the way, when I carried this bag, I almost always carried it by the by the handle, so I, I would I always put my strap in there like that, right? So it doesn't dangle and hang on the ground. But yeah, there's a magnum PI-ness, a very like a put togetherness. Like this, here's the thing. I'm a long hair, right? I've got sneakers on, my pants are cuffed a little too short. Like I'm I'm probably wearing a shirt of some like some Grateful Dead shirt or some shit like that. So these are like a great contrast to me. And here's what I noticed about the, the style on this stuff. I, I mentioned the woolen prints. Woolen prints make these t-shirts out of, out of merino wool. Merino wool can be kind of warm depending on where you live but uh, and, and the season, but the thing about them is they the weight of them is perfect. They drape really well. There's a ton of dignity in the way that it looks, right? And it's just a t-shirt. Just a t-shirt and some decent jeans from Dewar or like a chino from Dewar or, or and like and then some like some funky, you know, some funky like barefoot <laughs> fucking Viva la France shoes. Big video coming out on barefoot shoes that don't look lame soon. Oh, I, I got too many. I, I gotta I gotta film that thing. So like ultimately a very casual street sort of style for me, but like elevated. Elevated with that wool t-shirt so that the way that it falls is just it it's it covers my fat rolls it like I love those I'll link to those in the description below and that like stylistically is sort of sick but like I said you got to worry about what's <laughs> what vibe you're repping you know people are going to be like fuck dude let's get this guy to pay for dinner so if you're looking for confidence if you're looking for like uh the the, the optics of authority and stuff like that 
this this has it. Obviously, if you're carrying these though, you need to go as low key casual and as friendly as possible. Fuck you and your fucking turtlenecks and shit like that and your superiority. Don't do that. Don't bring that here with this. No, you're already playing a game that's like that's like at such a higher level than a lot of people can can even conceive of to be in a bag like this, right? So let's bring the kindness. Let's let's bring it. And the truth is, you should be kind. Like this is you're 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 like stoked. Like you get to be you get to have a relationship with a product that's gonna last you for an extremely long time. Made from craftsmen and women who know what they're doing, right? It's like you're partaking in this tradition that goes back way longer than ballistic nylon and, you know, like, I, I don't know, taped seams on waterproof bags and shit like that. It's like, this is just straight up ancient technology that's still legitimately and, and like truly lovely to use. The duffel especially is my favorite. My fa like, I love this just big open thing. It's just a sack. That's all it is, it's just a sack. So you need to carry stuff from point A to point B, put it in a big sack that's protected and it's gonna last you a long time. It's gonna patina well or break in well over time. Uh, yeah, and you've got a little bit of organization, even a little pocket out here. It would be nice if there was a little more pocketing because if I'm traveling with this, um, and my daily carry. This is like this. It'd be cool to just have my snack with my like on the go items right here in this thing. That'd be awesome. But it would affect the uh, it would affect the the way that these panels uh, are constructed in in a way that might like compromise how it works. But there is uh, there is part of me that still loves my. There's something that's just like undeniably attractive to me about the packed one. Okay. I love this bag. It's a little more technical because I can zip it open and I've got a clamshell right here. Organic cotton in here, a little laptop compartment, two compartments. I can organize things easily. I can see stuff over here. I do the same thing where all my clothes are not even in a packing cube, just rolled up and I can just quick grab. I can even then zip this up and put it away and it looks like clean in the room and it's super easy to open it back up. Great visibility, tech stuff over here maybe. And the truth is like, you know, there's different kinds of travel. Like car travel, I actually prefer this. I prefer just a big sack. I just, I, I just, I, for some, when I'm traveling by car with my family, it's, this is daddy's bag. But when I'm going on an airplane and I want to do the duffel and then like a daily carry bag vibe, then I, I like, then I, I think I might prefer this. There's this chance that I can fit this under the seat in front of me uh, with this one if I'm not packed out too much. There's a chance all I need is this and a sling, right? But I also, I have that open flap for getting at stuff. I have more external access here. So I carry with this bag very differently in travel than I do this one. I prefer this for airline travel. And the truth is, this is old world and this is new world. This is like a Willamette Valley Pinot Noir, right? This is like a fucking Burgundy, you know? Like there, these are these are two of these are two of some of my my hands favorite products in the entire world in terms of what things feel like. These are two of my favorite products in the entire world in terms of like the the, the technical design and aesthetics that went into this, the technical like just manufacturing simplicity in. In like layout and just like what is this thing going to be and let's not fuck that up and then like here's a laptop and here's a here's an internal organization and here's like a little key pouch and here is fucking German bullskin leather. I'll link to my video on the packed one below at this time code. One thing. I definitely noticed is when I left these bags in my car, visibly, when I went to pick up my son uh, from like from a place in San Diego that was like definitely, de like like definitely had this feeling like holy shit, man, those are two really expensive looking leather bags sitting in my ba in the back of my car, totally visible, and you're like whoa, you you felt that I didn't I'm not used to feeling that like I like you can. Normally I'll have a bunch of bags or a bunch of shit in the back of my car and and like it's always looks like whoa I could break into that car and who knows what I'd get. But when you've got literally the richest looking leather gorgeous <laughs> you know you're going to be looking at that going like are those just like full of iPhone Pros? Okay, so those are these two David bags. I am so stoked I got to uh spend this kind of time with them, honestly. They're they're, they're, it's been, like I learned a lot because it's so simplifying. It's so simplifying getting out of the like boundary supply, wandered, some of my favorite bags, very technical, lots of organization, lots of stuff built in, made with modern day materials, synthetics and stuff like that. This, 
So much more straight ahead, simple. It feels like an older weathered man in a cowboy hat who's like looking at me going like, why the fuck do you need so much fancy shit? And like, I heard it. I heard it and I'm like, you're right. I don't need that much fancy shit. Something about this is more cowboy, even though like you, like for some people that word fancy, you're like, what do you mean? This is a super fancy bag. There's something in the leather and the old worldness that is uh, palpable. You, you feel that. And that on a daily basis is an energy. Like it, it shifts a little bit of how you, like you, you simplify what you're carrying. You, you're like, maybe I need less. Maybe I'll go with less. Like, it would be better if I had less. This carries better when there's not more stuff in it. Maybe I'll go with less and find that I'm, that I'm, I'm fine. I lack for less than a, like, I don't need all the things I thought I needed. Now I'm going to link below at this time code to more duffel bags and daily carry bags, as well as travel bags, okay? I've got a whole page on each one of those, listing off my favorites, typically in kind of in order of like how I recommend them to my friends. So if you're interested in a duffel or a travel backpack or a daily carry bag, go to one of those links now. And while you're there, make sure you're at the bottom of the page, you get on the email list there, because that's how you enter to win our next big giveaway, which is coming soon. And like, I almost never send you emails. So there's no spam coming from there. And it enters you to win one of like, we're doing thousands of dollars worth of giveaway at our next giveaway, which is passing 75,000 subs, which is coming up in a few weeks here. Maybe depending on when I publish this video, maybe right away. Okay, so I'll link to that. I'll link to that below. To get on the email list, just free bags. You'll see the link at the description below in the time code. Uh, that's it, man. These were fun bags to use. These were really fun to use. I, like I said, I took them up to this. There's this guy, John Wineland. These two events that I've done in my life that have been like transformational, like let's let's go through an experience and check stuff out. Well, three, if you count the ayahuasca. And all three of those actually, including the ayahuasca, are like significantly life-changing. Like very, very like, whoa. And not that it happened in a moment. It, it's like, it's over time, the integration, the working on things, like over time, it, shift, it shifted something and it stayed shifted. I mean, if you feel, feel like that, like you just want to get a shift in your life, well, chances are it comes from getting a little more radical with your self-inquiry getting a little more honest with yourself, okay? Why? Because we all have fucking blind spots, man. We all do. And we all get stuck in ruts in our relationship with our spouses, in our relationship with our kids, in our relationship with our work and productivity, in our relationship with our sense of, of purpose, vision, calling, value on the planet, right? Like, what are you doing here? You know, you don't want, you want to know how to feel really great in life? Be doing something you feel really motivated and passionate about and be finding a lot of success in it such that you don't actually worry about the lack and, and, and like and make, needing to make more money all the time. You're getting to work on things that you enjoy and you find that doing so, you, uh, you end up like having plenty. If you do that, you're going to notice it. You're going to like, you're going to feel it on the inside. You're going to be like, wow, wow, this feels good. Damn. Today was a good day. Didn't even have to use my AK. And the truth is you don't have to go to some event to get a little more radical with your self inquiry. You don't have to go to some, like you don't have to pay a bunch of money to have, to like get a little sense of where your blind spots are. You do have to confront this idea that, uh, that uh, well, you have to confront the idea that you, that you have a blind spot or blind spots and that that is okay that that does not disqualify you from trying. That in fact, everyone who's tried and succeeded also had blind spots, right? I know what it's like to, to be in your life, uh, like just sort of depleted, sort of depressed, sometimes really depressed, sort of numb, bouncing off of things as they come at you and you're like, you do not knowing if you're, if you're where you're supposed to be. Like, yeah. Me too. And I haven't really even solved that problem, but I, I have in a, in a really important way made movement, like seen movement and growth there that gives me an, an enormous amount of, of, uh, of like, oh, okay. Ah, uh, I, I can, okay. So I don't have to, I don't have it all figured out. I'm going to have some blind spots, but we can, we can like this being so, like, so what we can, so we're still going to have fun. Like let's, okay. Now. I feel like I just got here, you know what I mean? But getting just a little bit more radical in your self-inquiry, which means getting up to feeling feeling comfortable with it, right? This is why I like the psychedelics so much. 
Because every time I do a psychedelic, which has not been very often, it doesn't you don't need to do it very often. Every, it, it's uh, it's scary. It's it, it's scary. And why would you press into that? Like Terrence McKenna says, doing psychedelics is not easy. If you encounter your own superstitions for a moment, you might find the dissolution of the ego is not, in fact, the thing that you were supposed to fear, as if you were taught by someone somewhere to fear this disillusion that in fact is your very liberation. Psychedelics are not easy. I mean, in some ways it's just like you, you eat them, but in other ways it's like, oh my God, I'm gonna put this in my mouth and I know what, like it's, it's scary. And what I like about that is there's an invigoration in it. There's a little bit of like a, yeah, this is scary, but we've been here before. Thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have been there before me. We're not the first ones here, and we've been doing it for a long time, and uh, and maybe some interesting uh, self inquiry will come from it. But I do find that a lot of the hype around, you know, thank you Joe Rogan, thank you <laughs> Terrence McKenna and Alan Watson, all of the like like uh, you know Michael Pollan's new book, thank you Rick Doblin at Maps, thanks all of the researchers doing the, all this incredible work on psilocybin for for depression, MDMA for PTSD. It's in, it's incredible. The, the the results from these sorts of tests and, and, and this research so far outpaces the results of any other kinds of, of pharmaceutical that it's like jaw dropping for the pharmaceutical industry itself. I'm glad we're having this resurgence of it because I never got to do these things back in the day. I was not raised someplace where my mountain friends took me out into the desert to take fucking mushrooms and like howl at the moon. No, I'm a late bloomer to all of this stuff and I'm very timid and cautious. I'm afraid of being a bad boy. I think a lot of us are. I think a lot of us are timid and we're afraid of, of like doing something wrong in our life, right? And it's a big deal. That's like, that's real deal stuff to deal with that. And you're going to be dealing with that in, in any sort of romantic escapades, any lovemaking, any masturbation, all your sex stuff, right? Tied up with like, am I good or am I bad? A lot of us in, in America still have that, right? Another place where some radical self-inquiry can go a long way, meaning we look inside, we go, why do I think the way that I think? We can maybe have a little consciousness about why we think the way we think, and that in and of itself is enough to shift some sort of paradigm to where we're, we're, we're in the world, we're relating to our spouse or our children or our, our customers or our employees or our vision or whatever in a slightly more conscious way. And a slightly more like, I, I, have, I have more of a sense of like, oh I, yeah, no, I, this is not surprising to me. This is not alien to me. I, what I'll probably be, thinking here is some sort of egoic sort of survival mechanism is gonna be like defensive thing when she says something like that. And the psychedelics can be really effective at going a little more radical at your self inquiry, but you can also make a mountain out of a molehill. Like these are just useful. Life is the psychedelic. Life is absolutely the trip. Life is the fucking journey. You putting money in your bank in a way that doesn't, that you feel like you're not a villain and you're not a slave that's a fucking huge psychedelic right now. If you can learn how to do that. And it's an epic journey. It's, it's epic. It's what I've been working for the last seven years, helping people learn how to do. Learning how to be in a romantic relationship with a long-term like monogamous partner and keep it vital, keep it fresh. This is a psychedelic, my friends. Raising children, <laughs> having children, labor. <laughs> this is a psychedelic. Man, I'll link to one of the first, one, like an early video for me, where my first video thing I did was called Father Apprentice. I'll link to the video there. I won't explain it. Some of you might watch it. It's old and silly. But labor is a psychedelic. And, and here's the funny thing about that. When you go into labor mode, when my wife and I were, were like labor workers, she is, I, I've been in more labors than I thought I'd be in when I was like coming up as a young man. And there's something magic that happens in labor. Like people get into fucking, especially the women, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. There's like a rhythm. There's like, there's like a, like an energy that's shared and like, cause someone's going through something fucking heavy and this is coming through. This baby, this child is coming through. There is no other way out of this but through it. My only experience of that for my own body is, you know, taking 
four or five grams of mushrooms or like a couple big swigs of ayahuasca and you're like, this is going to come through you now. But in that state, in those places, you, you have to let go of all this preconception. You have to let go of the story. You have to let go and just like, all right, let's just ride this out. Let's do what we need to do. My labors. Hey, I need you to push on my lower back. All right, here we go, baby. I'm pushing on your lower back. I got so sore from pushing on her lower back, but I was in that flow state. All of us were. We were, we were tending to this very real thing that's coming through literally from like some other dimension through this like portal of a woman <laughs> that somehow I was involved. I got to fuck her. That might sound crass to you, but I like, I, I really like getting to make love to my wife. I think you probably like making love to people too. It seems to be a common thing around humans. Humans, most of the humans that I meet, they, uh, they have, they, they like, they like those sorts of things. We have this thing called an orgasm. It's amazing. I don't know if you've tried it. It's sensational, but it's just like another resource, just like a psychedelic. It has to be used like wisely. It has to be used wisely. Otherwise you're running around trying to figure out like how you're going to be a dad. You didn't even, like, you're not even going to stay with this person. Clearly the relationship isn't working, but like the baby's coming. It's real shit, man. Life is so fucking real. I should probably call this video to an end. I mean, I'm, I've been recording for like, like what, almost two, an hour and 45 minutes at this point. That means this video is probably gonna be like an hour long on leather bags with me just hamming it up at the end. But I think it's important for all of us to, to be thinking, especially if you're looking at these leather bags, probably executive level. You're probably thinking about, you've probably got some ambition. You're probably thinking about like where you're gonna go in life, what you wanna be about. You might be dealing with some like, hey, am I enough? Am I doing enough? Right? Am, am I it, like, like you know, we, we respond well to a challenge. You might not be challenging yourself enough or you might be challenging yourself too much. There's a lot of different places to be in modern life, man. A lot of different ways to, to be feeling right now. And the like, the thing I find really useful is being able to get radical with your self inquiry, right? Also being able to turn that off and just go into flow state because like this baby's coming through and I just need to push on the back of these hips. But extricating myself from the worry and the anxiety and the depression in my life. Now, I, I didn't stop any of that. I actually went into all of it. I explored, you, you, you actually push into that. Why is that? That's the radicalness in the self-inquiry is leaning into like, why am I anxious? What am I worried about? Where is this depression actually coming from? What is the actual feeling of it? Or why don't I like it? It's hard to learn how to be your fucking self in modern life because most of us aren't prepared very well for it. We don't have like the uncles, the dads, the grandpas because they didn't have the uncles, the dads, the grandpas. You know, we've kind of lost the plot, <laughs> it seems like. That's why I'm so interested in indigenous cultures. You know, even though it can be a lot of magical thinking, uh, there is a groundedness that is, that is connected to just like animalistic survival. It's like, we've been doing this for generations and generations and generations. Like this is the cycle of our life. There's a groundedness I received from that. That's big. Like that was an ayahuasca space. But then there's, there's just straight philosophy. There's just straight like thinking logically and, and deeply psychologically about our life. Right? That's what like Dan Tacchini's work for me has been about. Like really, real like the revenant, man. If you want to go do four days of of just <laughs> like you don't come out the same. In a good way. In a good way. It's more you, right? You come out more you if you do your job right there. Because you're gonna be confronted with a lot of things that you'd rather resist. Because this is the whole thing. These blind spots, we don't want to find them. That's why they're there. <laughs> We've blinded ourselves to those spots, right? So what does it look like to actually try to try to look into those things? Sensational. Sensational. Life is beautiful and there's lots of room for growth. There's like growth is probably the thing you're really interested in in life. I like to let, like rest and like ah, oh. but I like to rest in ah oh, in a sense of like I have a trajectory in my life. There's a fin on the back of that surfboard. There's a direct there's a there's a ground uh, like a a directionality that I feel uh, I feel connected to. Because a lot of my life has felt like, have you ever seen someone surf without a fin? Like you're just sliding sideways down the face of the wave, spinning, but like the edges don't catch. You can't control where you're going. And then you can you can like get really good at it and like really edge in, but it takes a ton of effort. You put a fin on there, all you need is a little subtle like ankle and the, the whole thing moves with you really easily, almost effortlessly, right? That's the Wu way, baby. That's that's the way I want, like, the ease in life that we hear about in, like, the ancient Taoist stuff, which 
All roads basically point to the Tao, my friend. Okay, that's enough of the, the bro science Jungian <laughs> fucking shamanism on YouTube. Let's, let's get back to our, to our regular scheduled program. I know you have a lot of options when you fly the friendly skies of YouTube, so thanks for checking in here. I'm all about finding goods that are actually good, so if you're interested in this sort of dialogue, subscribe, let's hang out. And if you're really interested in the last few minutes of this, you should follow on Instagram. I'll link it in the description below. Come over to Instagram, Twitter. Also, I'm constantly putting out articles there, uh, like finding stuff. Also, uh, Spotify, a link to my Spotify. I've made a handful of these playlists on Spotify that I'm like curating. I love good music. Good music for going on a walk or getting into state, listening to some good headphones, plug like, and just kind of, you know, plugging away at the background. One of the playlists is just brain candy. It's music I love to work to. But you can follow there and follow some of those playlists if you're on Spotify. Okay, y'all. Be yourself. Be yourself. Make good choices. Uh, I'll link right now. The final link will be my be yourself resource. One of the things that one of my closest friends, like who's like early on, who, who, you know, when you meet those people who, who are just like 10 steps ahead of you and you're like, fuck, dude, this person like, you just feel grateful to know them, that, that they like you, that they're being friends with you. My friend Josh Ship was like that. And he was like, Chase, you're the most like yourself the, of, of like almost anybody I've ever met. Like, I think you should teach people how to be themselves. You should have a course on how to be yourself. Um, so I have that resource that I'm growing now, but I don't want to teach it like a course. I don't know. So I'll link to the resource in the description below at this time code. You can check it out. You can hang out if you want to learn how to be yourself my way. Because... Like I was just at this this man, woman, this couple's fearless intimacy retreat and the, the leader, John Wineland, this guy is a fucking he's a powerful dude. And Kendra, his partner is like, dude, these are powerful people. Clearly like in, like solidly curated presence, like a kind of impeccable, impeccable and tons of integrity, but also powerful. Like this guy, is, the work, their work is like sexual yoga. It's like tantric yoga, right? And so we're, uh, my wife and I were working like to just develop our nervous systems for me to be able to take more through my nervous system without, you know, like blowing a fuse, right? Or blowing my load. She was practicing stepping into femininity and 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 finding her, her feminine pleasure in it, which was like so, like, was so lovely for her. She loved that. I was stepping into masculine and not being such a whiny little bitch, which I like. I mean, I have a very fe feminine, like, this is all talking. It's like, yeah, there's a lot. Like, I just want to gab with my friends, whatever. So to come into, like, to be tr practicing that masculine, holding the space, creating the container, deep, deep breath, connection to consciousness, grounding and all this stuff. It was pow it was powerful, man. I loved it. If you can do one of if you are in a committed relationship and you're or or not and you want to go like develop like that part of you, whew, it was so impactful and, and challenging, really challenging in a lot of ways, but good. And one of the things that I see in a lot of these sort of worlds is is it's so mind-blowing to think about life this way that now like you find people that you can think about it like that with and and it's like wow you have the same conversation same words same vernacular you can be vague and stuff and i find that still the hard thing is to to know this masculine feminine or this this like and these are just energies everybody has both of these right it's like we have we have a, a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. M magnets have a, a north pole and a south pole. There's this polarity thing that seems to be integral. And but like neither one of them exists without the other. Do you understand? Right? Like Alan Watts says, we like the the bee and the flower. We call them two things, but they're really one organism. You'll never find bees where there aren't flowers. They're pollinators. You'll never find flowers where there aren't pollinating insects like bees. Right? The really one organism. This is more of a systems approach to looking at the world. And that's why I'm so inspired in design and product and stuff. Because some of these designers are just systems thinkers. But seeing this guy, John Wineland and his partner Kendra, and same thing with Dan, uh, my like these these are people who have mentored me in some ways and their sense of of pre it's it's like, you know, when you meet someone and you really like them and you find yourself imitating or copying them for a little while. This isn't necessarily being yourself, right? This is doing a version of them that like that you that is accessible for you. And I, what I'm interested in is is 
is like, I am really interested in being me, being what is the most comfortable thing for me to be, like pulling off all the fucking cobwebs, all the stupid archaic beliefs that no longer belong, all of the shitty like narratives that are, that were that like I, I invented when I was two years old and I was like doing the best I could to try to figure out how to cope with this mom teaching, treating me this way or this dad like being this or not being that or something, you know? This is where our sort of karmic like personality like, you know, our ground is laid and it, it encrusts and it gets metastasized. It gets like baked into our, into our actual postures in life. And so much about personal development, self-actualization, growth, and all this stuff is just knocking through those barnacles, opening up that central nervous system, releasing that stuff from the body, releasing that stuff from the mind, like, uh, un, like, like removing that metastasized tissue so that like, or, or, you know, knocking it into, into actual like movement again, into actual flow with, with like, you know, the thing. That growth is absolutely possible and it's absolutely life-changing, right? And it's absolutely you who's gonna do it. Nobody's doing this to you. You go to Tony Robbins, you get popped, like it gets exciting, the, the energy in the room, it's palpable. Like you get to be someone totally different here. Have fun experiencing that. See what it's like for you to be someone totally different there, right? You're still gonna come back to, you know, that one shitty coworker who always like kinda has that weird fucking shitty vibe. And one day like it's gonna trigger you into something like, and you're gonna be in that same place again. Like you're gonna, it's integration. Integrating this stuff over time is really where the work is. And you're the actual practitioner of that. Physician, heal thyself, right? So my stuff about be yourself is related to that. It's like becoming your own shaman, right? If you're if you're a medicine, you know, sacred medicines kind of person or 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 like developing your inner philosopher if you're like interested in the stoicism and the, and the sort of the cleanliness of like rationality. But certainly no matter what, it's going to involve your body, it's going to involve your emotional work, it's going to involve your relationships because this is where we find out who we are. This is where we locate ourselves. It's going to be in our career and in our work where we make our money because money is this thing that like you actually can't survive without it unless you're like unless you're like in the jungle and you you're doing like indigenous people type living that's like real deal stuff i don't know a single person who does that full time and and came from that and you know still does that because i live in places where you have to like fucking drive to get places so we all have to make that money man and that's what i've been working on for so long at fizzle which is the first company that i started with my close buddy Corbett Barr and it's still going strong and now I'm doing the YouTube channel a bunch but man working working with entrepreneurs for seven years trying to make some magic potion in these courses that are like how can I help you become successful because when you find your flow in life and the universe is right there like giving you like there's just customers who are willing to pay you money for this thing you made how does that work? And what I found there is it's like, it's not like what those seven years was a lot of learning about all the different kinds of people out there, man. All the different kinds of visions, all the different levels of the game and all the different ways you can play it, right? There's so many ways to play the game and you're gonna come up with your own and you're gonna follow that way through. Um, it's going to come through you. It's like labor, like it's going to come through. So you can fight it, you can, you can also be at ease with it and watch it go. You're not in any rush, you know? It's like Ramdas always says, uh, you're, his, one of his buddies was like, Ramdas, you're, you're enrolled in life. You should start, it's like a, it's like a school. You should, you should try the curriculum. Final resource I'll link to you, Ramdas's Experiments in Truth is an awesome, awesome audiobook. It's just Ramdas lecturing. And if I don't know if you know about Ramdas, but he's one of the best lecturers, one of the best public speakers I've ever heard. He just goes like my this guy Rob Bell, who's a phenomenal communicator. He talks about how Rob like, like will just spend time listening to Ramdas because he just he just so, shows up. He's just got like a few materials and he'll just go just in the flow, connected, like speaking. And I find that I go on a walk and I listen to that book. It's like nine or ten lectures, and I just 
I like. It's almost like I go into trance mode. I like the way he thinks and talks. He's a little orthodox Hindu for me. So you might not like that language, but there's the essence is of transformation and of, of all the things that we're looking for in modern life. It's, it's all there. If you learn to speak a little bit of mysticism, it's all there. So that's it, man. That's fucking, there you go. I don't know who you are and wh why you started watching this video, but I know that it wasn't for all that shit. <laughs> But maybe it made sense, because this is what I do. I kind of sneak in little like life philosophy fun stuff um, because I think we're all craving it. I think we're all hungry for it and we're all fucking deep, deep badass practitioners of life. And we're geared up for it. I mean, every fucking cell in your body is tuned up to be engaged in what's going on in life. And you're lucky. You're lucky to exist. You are fucking lucky to exist. We all are, right? And yet how much of modern life ends up feeling like a, I don't really feel like doing I wish I didn't have to do Well, you know, you know? It's, it, and it's, it's, it, it, you can just, I mean, I tanked down into that space for so long. I still do. I still, I still will be like, oh, wow, look at that. I'm depressed. Like, I can't, my energy's down. Chans like chances are I'm really I'm actually just tired because I made a long video like tomorrow I'll be like a little more depressive. I won't be like why am I not feeling so fucking good? <laughs> it's because you actually you, you need to like recuperate you need to rest That's why the cannabis and creativity. That's why the cannabis cannabis is such a massive tool for rest If you can get serious about rest everything in life will change Oof, It's a really big thing. That'll be a part of the be yourself. So I'll link to the be yourself thing Below, I'll link to Ram Dass's experiments in truth. I'll link to everything in the time code description. I hope you click some of those links. You know, I'm supported when I uh, get get you introduced to something that you actually are wanting to buy, um, and I only get supported over time when I put things in in your uh, mind and in front of you to click and buy that are actually like you you buy and you end up going like fuck. I'm glad I bought that. What else do you got, right? That's what we do here. I want to give you that feeling of, fuck, I'm glad I bought that. What else do you have for me? All right, y'all. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.